All right, I think we get started and then we'll let everyone else trickle in and we are recording this so we don't need to worry if you're missing um, the start or the end. So hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar around new marketing leader survival guide for 2025. So I'm Bella Yoloff. I'll be the host today as we explore the essential steps for marketing leaders to thrive in their roles during their first year. So whether you're just starting out or transitioning into the new role, we've gathered um, some very actionable insights that can make quite a big difference. And we're going to cover um, planning, aligning with teams, choosing the right tech and how to avoid common mistakes. So I will share my screen and we will jump right into our presentation. This will be, like I said, recorded and there will be the slides that we will share as well. So Chris, Marcus, can you just give me an okay that we are seeing our slides here? Yes. It's there. Go. Okay. Absolutely. Lovely. So for some quick introductions, um, I'll get into the agenda as well. We'll start with the introductions. We will then talk about aligning with our CEO, first 90 days, expectations versus reality, how to approach the technology stack and top mistakes made. And then we'll have time for Q&A. I think there's quite a lot of questions that we also got on LinkedIn in the comments. And so probably most of you are also eager to ask those questions. And so we'll make sure we have at least 15, 20 minutes for the question. So quick round of introductions. I'm Bella, I'm our head of customer success here at Enrich and I've been working with um, our lovely Chris from EHS Insight, who's also our customer. And I will hand it over to Chris for an introduction and then to Marcus. Hi, I'm Chris Collier and I'm the vice president of marketing for EHS Insight. A little bit about EHS Insight is we are an EHS and ESG platform and essentially designed to save time, money, and mitigate risk while improving the safety culture of, of companies. I've been in the EHS industry for about 16, 17 years now. Um, and not only am I a speaker, but I am a customer of Enrich, which is why I'm proud to be here. Marcus? Yes, so hey everybody. My name is Marcus Stahlberg. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Enrich. I've been with the company since 2015 when the company was founded. And for those of you who don't know Enrich, so Enrich is an account-based go-to upmarket platform. So uh, as an ABM platform, we are a challenger in the market, uh, really focusing on, on like uh, the lower cost of ownership, uh, the ease of use, um, so kind of avoiding complexity, and then also like the quality of support. So. If you're looking for an ABM platform, it makes sense to look into us as well. So let's get started. This is a very interesting, uh, interesting topic. Um, and um, from my perspective as a CEO, um, like uh, I wanted to start this with um, a bit of a conversation with Chris, one of our like amazing customers, um, about like um, uh, his journey and also kind of bringing in a bit of my own thoughts about. Uh, about how uh, to onboard, how a marketing leader should be onboarded into the into the organization. So I'd say, like as the first point, um, I'd like to ask and and discuss is um, it's about like whether uh, the marketing leader is able to talk, speak the same language with the CEO, and this includes uh, kind of a strategic uh, perspective, like not only looking at uh, you know next quarter and following, but actually seeing. Like, what is the vision of the company like over the you know next twelve months, next twenty four months, and so? Then um, being able to talk about revenue, so not just about uh, you know marketing metrics and uh, kind of tactical things, but also also really kind of align about the revenue goals. And then um, as a super important thing, like uh, go to market is uh, is a collaborative effort, so it's uh, uh, alignment with the sales, also with the CS, with product. That's super important. And then finally, this may be like more related to our approach. Uh, like um, for me, it's very important that there is this approach that uh, avoiding to avoid waste uh, in, in everything that is done. So not to burn money, but actually to use it efficiently. So what do you think, Chris? Well, that was a lot of questions. Where you, where's, where's the first one you want to start with the alignment of communication between 
the marketing leader and the CEO, we could start there. That, I mean, being that, um, and, you know, and, and this is actually, this is my second time being a new marketing leader for a department. And so um, both times have been different, but you've got to, if, if you report to the CEO, who's your boss, you've got to be gelling and you've got to be on the same vernacular. You've got to be understanding what, where they want to go. And whereas I believe that you should run your department in a way that, that, you know, represents the company well and, and adds to the bottom line, you've got to, you've got to do the day-to-day -day with, in mind with, with how your C, your CEO wants to see everything ran as well. And so you you've got a fine line that you've got to, that you've got to walk, but ultimately, you know, um, you know, when I first started, uh, Gary McDonald, who's our, our co-founder and CEO and president of, of EHS Insight, um, you know, it was very important for me to understand what his goals were for short-term, long-term. I think also, um, understanding how he works and how he talks. Um, you know, that's very important because you might have CEOs who want a lot of context or you have CEOs who are like, no, I want the bulletized. I want everything bulletized. You go through it, just give me the top level. And then I'm expecting you to, to bring the results and the reports back. And so I think it's you know very important to learn and you'll be hearing me say that a lot over the, the course of this webinar, but really learn your how your ceo operates because if you can't get along with your boss the ceo especially if he's functioning um as the leader of the company itself you're gonna fail um and so you you have to have alignment with that leader yeah i agree uh, i agree with that completely and um i suppose there are like uh you know as many styles of uh, working as there are ceos so uh, i think that's a really good Good piece of advice to to get really understanding like what is the what is the way the CEO works. Then, um, if we think about um, let's say the CEO's goals, and uh, especially if we think about uh, kind of um, what who the CEO needs to report to, and uh, who who is the CEO accountable to, like um, let's say board or or there are other other people in the management team and so forth. So how how do you how do you approach that? How did you approach that? And how how do you kind of give this um, feeling to the CEO? That, okay, uh, you know this person is going to help me with my goals as well. Well, and in my case, being that my boss is on the board as well, you know, it's, it's, it's good because I will ask him and it's been, it's been a pleasure developing, um, a close relationship with, with my boss, you know, like, okay, how, how would I present this to the board? How would you want to see this to the board? Because even though he's on the board, there's also certain things that you've got to be wary of and you can't, you know, if you're, if you're going to bring bad news, you better have a solution to that bad news is what, what I always say. Or if you say no to a specific idea, you better have two different ideas backing it up that are going to be like, well, that's a, that's not a bad idea, but I think that we should do this, this, and this instead. But I think for me, um, it was extremely helpful. I treat, we, we do monthly reports to, to my boss and our executive vice president of sales. And then I also then roll them up into a quarterly and how that's worked for me is I then just compile those and that's what I present to the board. So I treat every month, especially working with him every day as almost like a board meeting and, and making sure I'm rolling up the KPIs that he wants to hear. Not a lot of the fluff. Um, if he wants me to dive, dive deeper into the fluff, happy to do that. But ultimately what are the KPIs that he wants to see that actually matter? Um, as we're, you know, going through the year and as they're affecting the bottom line. And so, you know, that's, we've, um, you know, my RevOps and senior growth manager, uh, Mohammed Bozo and I, we've, we've worked diligently on fine tuning this monthly report, just to make sure that everything is dialed in and it's with the KPIs and information that's, that's pertinent and information. And then it's really easy for me to roll it up uh, quarterly and hand that off to the board. Um, without me having to do a lot of prep work and, and, and on top of it too, it allows me to dive deeper and, and be very knowledgeable uh, about the health mm -hmm. and where we're going and how things, how things are working. And so 
that's where, you know, I think um, it's extremely important too. I hope I answered your question there, Marcus. That was a, I felt yeah, like I rambled it's, it's on pretty for a good. It, 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 yeah, it's pretty good. So there's one aspect um, that you didn't answer and I, I want to ask about that. So, so um, it's important, um, at least in my opinion, to have this kind of narrative uh, that um, the CEO buys and also the board buys. Like, it's not just about the, let's say, quarterly report. Reporting, but there is some kind of a journey that we are taking. There is some kind of a target that we are going after. There are some kind of milestones that are, you know, like um, mm. we need to hit before we get to the target. So I think that's also yep. an important, uh, important part of this. So, so it's not just about, you know, reporting what happened, but also what's going to happen and not just, you know, next quarter, but like, you know, long time after that. So what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, no, you're absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. And that was something that we did as well in the initial planning. And we'll we'll get into, you know, the the 90 day plan that I created before I even started. I actually used it as kind of as my package to try to to get the job. But you yeah, not only are reporting, and that's something that I like to do even in board meetings, because typically board meetings, they happen, you know, they could happen as soon as four weeks after the, the quarter concludes, or they could go um you know six weeks into and so what i like to do is i like to say here's what happened here's the current state and if things are wrong here's where i want to go but in addition to that marcus what i think is really really important is having those milestone projects that ultimately you know if you're building a demand generation engine or if you're aligning abm and your sales stages and content you can't eat the elephant all in one meal it's one bite at a time and so you've got to chunk that away but you've got to prioritize and do it in a way that makes sense doesn't burn out your team but also but ultimately also makes the huge splash the you know the biggest splash for the small amount of time you've got i had a previous ceo that told me that um, in a typical pe backed company three to five years in a holding pattern every month is two percent of where I gotta turn these off. Um, my, uh, I always love those. Everybody thinks that they're great. Um, I'm gonna turn them off right now. One second. But you've got two two percent every single month that you're working towards as you know going to an exit, and so you have to make sure every day, every minute, hour, day, week, month counts. There's no off time. There's no lagging. You've got to just keep pushing forward. And so one of the things we did was really align with, okay, well, here's the projects. Here's what we want to do. Most, most marketing leaders come in and they, they say, we need a new website. That's going to really do it. We actually didn't have a bad, web, bad website. It was my CEOs that I want a new website. So that was something that we started planning for and chunking away and, and getting and planning, you know, and we had to do it and design it in a way that would make sure that it's going to support our growth goals and it's scalable moving forward. So that's kind of a little example of some of the things we've done. We also do OKRs um, in my department, and they're always built on how do how do how do we chunk away these these huge projects to be more manageable. But then also I can roll that up to my boss and the CEO and go like, listen, here's where we're going. Here's we are, where we are against our goals. And here's what we're doing to pivot if things aren't going in the direction that we wanted them to. Chris, I have a quick follow-up question before we actually get yeah. into the 90 days and I'm, I'm mindful of our time here, but I can imagine that other marketers are feeling there's a stress element, I suppose, when you start, right? Because you also need to prove your success quickly. But a lot of these projects, as you know, with marketing are long-term, uh, especially ABM as being one of them. So what's the advice you can say here about aligning and setting expectations, but setting the expectations that you might not achieve X amount of wins in say three months or six months. And so how do you plan for more of that longer term conversation? I think everyone, you know, is probably asking themselves that, especially in a new role. And how do you tie yeah. that expectation setting into the 90 days? That's a great question, Bella. Um, let me see if I can ramble on and come up with a with a with an appropriate answer. I think first of all you you got to get alignment on what is the most important things to the ceo and then for me 
working backwards with the short-term wins and then the long-term wins. Really, the long-term wins are, are building a scalable uh, marketing machine that will grow with the company uh, and at the end of the day, help grow pipeline and close one that's going to add to the bottom line, the, the new mm -hmm. ARR every year, supporting the customer success and the expansion ARR. The short term is all the other things that a marketing leader has got to be knowledge about, knowledgeable about and, and dig into. I am a leader that likes to lead from the front. I'm going to take the bullets first, um, but I'm also, I'm going to give my team the credit. Um, even mm -hmm. if I'm the one that did it. And so nice. you've got to get in the weeds, you've got to plan accordingly, and you've got to you've got to understand everything you've got to know. And that's I think that's more of the short term. You've got to really start absorbing. I mean, everybody knows this when you start a new job. You work a lot of hours. You're just gonna work a ton. And my wife my wife and my children know that when I start a new role, I'm gonna lock myself in our bedroom, they're gonna bring me food, I come out for air every once in a while. But I really just immerse myself in everything um, just to uh, uh, learn and absorb as much information as possible. So I think, you know, one one thing is just also, I think I've got it in here. Don't set too crazy of goals in your first 90 days. Mm -hmm. too. Like you've got to have that quick, those quick wins to show that you are the right person that the, that they decided on to lead the department. But ultimately, too. Um, most, I hope most CEOs also understand that mar marketing is not the magic bullet that's going to solve everything too. Right. There's a lot that goes into marketing, you know, from brand development, brand sustainability, um, growing the demand generation machine, sales enablement, ABM, SEM, SEO, technical mm -hmm. SEO, on-page SEO. There's just so much that you've got to be knowledgeable about and, and dig into. And so you've got to, um, luckily I have a boss who he was running the marketing department for years with Muhammad before I came on board. And so for me, this transition was much easier because he knows what good looks like, but it also, it also made it hard for me too, because I can't bullshit him. And so you've got to be honest and transparent right. because he, he, kn he knows exactly if I'm lying or if I'm, you know, fibbing him or f giving him some fluff information, he's going to come back and be like, no, that's BS, Chris. Yeah. So I hope that answered Absolutely. your question. Absolutely. No, it did answer my question. And even though here, there's a lot that's happening in the first 30 days, 60, 90, and we'll send this as well after the webinar. But, you know, we talked about the alignment and you have here, you know, that your, your goal is to meet with sales and other departments for alignment with them as well. And especially when we think about account-based marketing, I think too, for marketers, when you look at your, also your ICP, Right, that's a super important part of the process. And so what would you say is the most instrumental thing here in the first 30 days about aligning with sales, particularly, right? Mm -hmm. You have here start meetings with sales. And when you also start to think about your projects and account-based marketing being one of them, you know, how did you also align on an ICP with all the appropriate people um, within the first 30 days? So, I think the biggest thing is for me, identifying the problems. You have to talk to people about that. What's not working for them? What do they want? What are, you know, what are the areas that just aren't working um, to get alignment? And, you know, that's why I think it's really important to at the very least set meetings immediately with all the department heads. But I went deeper and I met with our, you know, every, as many teammates as I could within our company just to start asking them questions and what they want and what they see. And, you know, a lot of them are, are much longer tenured than I am. Um, basically, once you come to EHS Insight, um, you don't leave because it's a very healthy culture and it's a fun company to work for. But I think identifying the problems and in those problems, you can gain some quick wins because you can say, well, I can fix this, this, and this, or our department can fix this, this, and this. And then it also gives you an understanding of the health of, uh, health of the company as a whole. Like when you're, when you're digging into mm -hmm. sales and you're talking with them, it's like, well, is it a pri pipeline problem? H are we closing? Yeah. Is it a lead problem? Uh, which goes into your next, your next question of, 
well, we didn't know how to describe ourselves even to our ICP. And it was a brand messaging problem. And we luckily mm -hmm. had um, Winning by Design, who's one of our poor co-cousins. We'd worked with them and they designed a, um, a whole ICP package. And luckily, I've worked in the industry so long that the ICP, it's changed its buying habits, but the ICP is still the same and they've still got the same mm -hmm. issues and problems that they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, um, and luckily the, the former sales leader as well, he'd been, he's worked in the industry for a long time as well. So mm -hmm. it was easy to have all of us come together and go like, well, here's our ICP. Here's the problems we're facing. Here's how we should be describing ourselves. It's going to differentiate ourselves from the competitors. Mm -hmm. Here's how we should be describing ourselves from a marketing perspective, a sales perspective, and a customer su success uh, perspective, which should all be the yeah. same. And the problem that we were having Absolutely. was we were seeing something different in marketing, something different in sales, something different in customer success. And it was leading to problems, which was, which, you know, was causing a little bit of churn, not a ton, but just issues with implementation where it's like, oh, well, you told me it was mm -hmm. this at the sales level with the sales rep was wrong. Um, and we would have to, you know, CS would have to correct it right there. Right, right. No, absolutely. And you bring up really valid points. And so alignment in ICP is that core foundation. And this leads me to my next question, which is also one of the most probably nerve wracking things for a new marketer is that you have to evaluate the entire tool stack and you're essentially, you're not starting, well, you could be taking over something, you, you might need to change something, but what's your, you know, advice for how to evaluate the tool stack and what was needed for you coming into EHS Insight in your role? This one is, um, you know, there's many different ways you could slice this pizza to get, I think, probably to the same answer. But what what I did initially is, um, I keep saying his name. I know he's listening right now, but uh, Mo, my senior uh, growth and RevOps manager, he did an amazing job of being able to show attribution for everything that we've got. Uh, on all channels. And so what that allowed me to do is go in and start evaluating what channels were creating the most pipeline, but more importantly, what channels were, uh, it, were creating the most closed one. And then what was the customer acquisition mm -hmm. cost? How many MQLs did it take to open an op? How many MQLs did it take to, to get a customer? And after we, we did that and we were able to you know, dive in deep to each channel, we identified a few channels that were costing us a lot of money, which goes back to Marcus's original question earlier. And I, within actually the first two weeks, and so that's why I say when I created this 90 day plan, it was before I even started. But once I got in underneath the hood, I was actually able to speed a lot of these up and get a lot of these done. Um, in the first 30 days and they were kind of out of order. But mm -hmm. Mo and I, we were able to go like, we need to shift money from here. We need to cut budget here. We need to give it to this channel. We need to improve this one. And we were making decisions right. within the first couple of weeks. That being said, it, it uh, well, th that, that then aligned with what my tech stack was um, and what, mm -hmm. how the tech stack was going to support where we were shifting the budget money in the different channels in order to give us success. Mm -hmm. And that leads me here. So I've kind of skipped through the final 30 days and you can see here, and that's a really good exercise to evaluate what's you know costing you money, what's not, but then, you know, account-based marketing is something that of course, at this stage in today's landscape, every marketer has to think about. And when did you, you know, know that, okay, I need an ABM approach strategy platform and you know here's how i'm going to shift uh my budget or my my overall strategy to abm it's funny too because as the years progressed we've actually even switched to put more prominence on an emphasis on abm and shifting more of the budget from an SEM perspective or an seo perspective while maintaining the health of those but shift it even more to abm i knew right away and it was one of my first tech stack um, items I wanted to onboard was an ABM platform. And luckily I'd already had conversations with Andy uh, at my previous company. And so I was aware of you guys that also worked with uh, a competitor 
Um, but I, I knew right away that we needed to have some component to not only support the sales stages, mm -hmm. also have an intent perspective to identify ICP and, and companies that are looking for our solutions, but also if we wanted to grow and that, and that actually was one of the main, the main conversations that. Uh, my boss and I had was he wants to move upstream. Most companies that are at mm -hmm. our stage and age want to move further up the mid market, dabble more into the enterprise, eventually get more high, you know, higher, higher mid market and then higher enterprise. And I knew that we needed a tech stack, a best, best in class tech stack that was going to support that, give, give our sales reps the tools that they, that would give them the ammo to go into battle for these, but then also give my team the insights that we're going to need to make the appropriate decisions in order to help us get to our goals, which is, you know, at the end of the year, a certain amount of ARR. Um, the cool thing is because we were able to just scream through that 90 day plan very quickly, we had ABM set up within I think it was my first 60 days here at the company, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of get a baseline, but I'll, uh, I'll let you ask the next question, Bella. No, no. And I, I just, I realized we had a slide here around approaching the technology stack, but that's, um, it's really important. And I think too, like, uh, one of my final questions for the tech stack too, is you, you mentioned a lot about how you already approached attribution. So I just want to have a follow up question to that. Like, you know, I think a lot of marketers are asking as well, was it in house? Um, or, you know, what do you look at as like that main pillar for the attribution factor? Um, you mean, like, what's the what's the final say of, you know, keeping track and making sure we're able to show where, where everything's coming. I mean, to kind of take it a step back too, I, I think, I think if you don't have your conversion tracking and your attribution tracking set up within the first 30 days, uh, you know, that should be an immediate thing if you don't have all of that set up. And the reason why is because you, you have to have a baseline and it, it, you can't be sending it out 90 days. You know, you need to get your rev ops, individual or you need to set it up yourself you need to get all of those set up immediately because then you can start tracking them appropriately appropriately luckily i came into a situation where it was already set up and i didn't have to worry about it but um you're looking for the magic yeah. bullet answer right like uh no i don't think is there even a magic bullet answer probably probably not right i mean you 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 want to be able to split your channels up you want to be able to, you know, you've got first touch, last touch, everything that happened in between. They could come in via SEO, but maybe they remembered your name and then switch you up through SDM. And so you want to be able to track the entire journey and 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 where every single touch point that the prospect and and eventually customer looked at, touched, was was you know given yeah. attention by. But ultimately, um, I look after that first touch. You know, was it direct SEO? Was it SEM? Was it ABM? Was it another channel? Was it a referral? Um, and then you, you can dig in further and see like, oh, well, here's the overall journey. But, you know, you want to, I want I want to see, okay, well, what channels are working? And then from there, then you, then there that you can then break it down by, you know, leads, MQLs, SQLs, opportunities, closed ones, see what channels are working uh, well, which ones are not, um, and then cut, you know, cut budget appropriately. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think we're just at time as well. So we have more of the Q and A. So I, uh, I can't see my screen here, but do we have some Q and A that's already trickled in that I can start with? I think that's I have one that's showing up around what are some of the KPIs to track and measure in the first year of your marketing leader role? So we talked a lot about that and it's attribution follow up, but if you can give some specific KPIs, I think everyone would appreciate that. I mean, it's the all of them, but not all of them are important. You know, you need mm -hmm. to be tracking all of them. You know, and um, you know, in the old days, it was always 
clicks and impressions and CTR. And, you know, that's, that's important from, I think, an SEM perspective. And I do look at those of like, okay, well, we're getting a ton of clicks. We're getting a ton of impressions, but we've got no conversions. And that's a very important yeah. KPI to measure as well. Um, because then it's like, okay, well now, now you don't have your ad copy aligned with your ICP and the landing page and maybe the keyword set. And so you've got to then start dissecting each, each one of those, um, those portions to see what the magic combination or the secret sauce is in order to get you to, you know, conversions that are from your ICP. CPL is huge. I know that we dug in right away just to see what our cost per lead was, um, not only from a paid perspective, but also all channels. So an SEO perspective, we had a, an SEO agency at the time. So what, what, uh, you know, what was their cost with our FTE costs, uh, in order to kind of determine like, well, SEO is a great channel because it actually, you know, gives us 65% of our leads and the cost is extremely low per lead. But, uh, so conversions, mm -hmm. CPL, conversion rates at every single stage of the funnel. And we're working on that right now too, like a real deep dive of previous years, this year, and then month over month to be able to show trends and, and say, okay, um, in this time of the year, we typically see a dip in the close one percentage as it comes down the funnel. So what can we do to help raise this? Or is there anything we can do? So then that means there's just nothing we can do, which I don't believe there's, there's always a solution. Then you then either ramp up before or after it. So you got to make sure that you've got to have something solid in the month before or after if that month is always dead. So essentially, mm -hmm. um, you know, conversion rates, bounce rates, I think are important too, especially from an SEO perspective, time on page, how much, how much time are people actually staying on your website? The average is going up. That means that you're providing content to your ICP that is actually pertinent, pertinent and, and relevant to them. And they actually want to read it. I could go mm -hmm. on and on and on. I mean, you know, I'm very, but, I do have a follow-up though yeah. on the ICP question. Um, so how often yeah. do you revise your ICP? I think that's a question for sure. A lot of people would have. Um, and how do you approach it? I don't think we revise it as much as we should, and we'll 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 be going back to the to the drawing board probably in Q one of next year. Luckily, since I had done a lot of this work last November, December, and then the work from Winning by Design had only been done shortly before that, you know, we feel like we've got a really good pulse. But you know, things are changing so fast. Um, in business these days, specifically in marketing. Um, I always tell this, uh, mm -hmm. Blake Bauer, who is our newest hire in our uh, marketing department, he actually went to the same uh, college I did, Washington State University. And I was asking him, and we both have marketing degrees. And so I asked him, what are they teaching you there? And he's like, oh, the four Ps. I'm like, oh my God, like, it's just so backwards. I'm like, although those are relevant, we don't call them the four Ps anymore. It, it's mm -hmm. just marketing is changing so fast that you've got to stay um, ahead of it. I think I answered your question. I'm not sure about it. No, you did. You did. Okay. No, absolutely. So, and I think now on the flip side as well, right? Where would you say um, not, you know, you're not going to hit all your goals, right? You're not going to hit all of your KPIs. And so what is, Typically, like, how would you approach if you don't hit a certain, you know, KPI? Um, but, you know, what do you do when you miss a goal, right? And back to that alignment with the CEO, right? I think a lot of marketers don't know how to approach that. So what's your advice there? And I'm sure you have very good advice because you're also very open and you're very transparent. And that's what I think has also worked quite well for you, right? Um, with the expectation setting. Thank you for that. And actually, I completely agree with that statement. I think the best advice I've ever been given from other peers and friends of mine who are other VPs and CMOs, bad news should travel faster than good news. And you don't wait till the 11th hour to report bad news. If things are going sideways, you need to report it ASAP. If, if MQLs are soft for the month, you start telling your sales leader and your boss, the CEO, and everybody else like guys we see that the mqls are soft we've been researching it it does seem that this is a trend this time of the year we are starting to see that things are climbing up 
but we're going to need mm -hmm. some additional help from you to source your own pipeline or, you know, we need to figure things out. And that's one example. Um, if you're getting close to not hitting your goals, you've either got to reevaluate, replan, but you've also got to be with that bullhorn saying, I'm not putting the white flag up, but I am telling you that things are not going as planned and this is what mm -hmm. we're doing to pivot. And I right. think with my boss and I, that's been a good relationship and trust builder of I'm not going to blow smoke in his direction, um, telling him, looking through rose colored glasses, I'm going to go, listen, we're, you know, the shit is not hitting the fan, but it could. And this is where we're going in a different direction in order to fix this and then keep keep the communication open and letting them know how this is going. And I think having open, this is a cliche and a statement that's used so much, but it could not be more true, especially in business and senior leadership. Mm -hmm. Communication has to be open and it has to come fast and all the time. You just have to, especially right. with us all working remotely, different countries, different areas of the United States, in, in my circumstance, you have to be talking with people and having that communication. Weekly one-on-ones, I think are important with your boss, but also other department heads, your team. That was one thing I set up right away. Department team, department meeting, but also one-on-one -on -one, um, to open that communication with uh, everybody as well, just so it's transparent in a closed loop. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And so on that on that end as well, with mistakes, you know, I think too, I, that's the way people learn is through mistakes and then correcting those mistakes. And so what are some of where, so two questions, right? One, where do you think any of your time was wasted in the 30, 60, 90 day plan? Because we'll, we, we will share this plan with everyone who registered. So we want to, you know, if there's anything in that plan that you said, okay, maybe I shouldn't have focused on this or time was wasted, right? So A, where was you think transparently your time wasted? And also what's like a top mistake that you think, um, you know, you made? And if you could, you know, open up with the crowd on that. There, the top mistake would be a particular third party campaign we ran for lead generation that we thought was going to be fantastic and it didn't garner anything and it was very expensive. And so, um, luckily, speaking with my boss and telling him well, we won't do that again, because in marketing too, is there's, there's a lot of experiment experimentation, but everything needs to be calculated risk. You've got to evaluate. Mm -hmm. Um, where your ICP is, is this the correct campaign and or channel to, to market to them, to them? And then setting those, those, those um, expectations that, you know, this is not it's like with ABM, this is not lead generation, you know, it is influencing um, and data collection of, of your ICP um, and influencing campaigns um, to help them. But um, that third party, I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to throw them under the bus because they're beautiful people. But that was probably the biggest problem that we had was uh, um, launching a campaign that just didn't work. And my team, I think, is on the call. Yeah. And so they know exactly which one I'm talking about. What was the first half of the question too, Bella? No, it was just where do you feel any time was wasted in the 30, 60, mm. 90 day plan? Or not even wasted, um, but, you know, something that you would say, okay, I would have done that differently, or maybe I wouldn't have at all even approached it. It's a good question because um, I'm a pretty humble person, but I also look at everything optimistically. So even if it is maybe not something that garnered the results I wanted, at least it was a learning opportunity. Um, I've re We removed failure uh from our vernacular within the department it's always a learning lesson and so that's probably the biggest thing too is um we did it it didn't work don't do it again because we're not about to we're not going to go crazy uh, or you know the definition of insanity is doing something over mm -hmm. and over and over expecting different results uh, where you're going to get the same results and so um I, this is a weird situation, but those first 90 days, 
I think I wish I would have looked more into conversion rates, even more mm -hmm. so. Um, luckily, we had them dialed in. And so I could figure them out um, quickly. But doing the exercise we're doing now, I think would have probably benefited us even more so earlier on in the year. Um, that would probably be my first, my the, the one change I would do if I had to do it all over again. Got it. That's very There's valuable, though. Here, uh, yeah. That maybe we can still go through. So yeah. we have two minutes, was, so for sure. Yeah. So that was about the um, how do you measure uh, results with ABM uh, using Enrich? I think. Yeah. What metrics do you look at uh, to measure ABM success in Enrich? So I'm also going to tease this guy because that's my that's one of my number ones. Also, another thing too is don't don't say a left and right hand for your team. I name all of my all of everyone on my team my my ones. They're all my number ones because they all bring something wonderful and beautiful to to the department. And um, you know, and so are they're they're all my left and they're all my right hand because I I literally couldn't do my job without them. But the metrics. Um, and Mo knows this, so he's testing me right now. But the metrics that we look at are the influence pipeline, influence closed one, even influence closed lost. Um, you could look at it, the the engagements, uh, which I think are very important. Looking at uh, all the assets in your campaign, like okay, well, how are they? When are they being viewed? How are they being viewed? Which ones are the most popular? If we've got several that are running, do we remove the other ones that aren't running as well and just really let the ones that are running really well um, go to town? And so those are just some of the kind of the top metrics that I would look at are the engagements, um, also the intent score um, from a prioritization standpoint of, of what accounts you should go after. Um, you know, we split everything up and in our department for a zero to 40, a 41 to 70, and then a 71 to 100. Um, so then you can align like where they are in the path of actually shopping for these products. And you shouldn't go after the 71 to 100 because they probably already picked somebody. So go, go work backwards. Thank you. I think we're just at time.